Our next speaker, David Dempster. Uh, David's professor of clinical pathology and um, former director or director emeritus of the um, um, Regional Bone Center, Helen Hayes Hospital. He was a PhD at the University of Glasgow, postdoc fellow at University of Zurich, visiting fellow at the University of Lyon. Uh, he's associate editor of Osteoporosis International and archives in osteoporosis, and he's going to give us a talk on regulation of bone homeostasis. Thank you very much, David, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It really is a pleasure uh, to be here, and I congratulate uh, you, David, and Pam, on this year 30th uh, of these meetings, which is really quite an accomplishment. Um, so I'm going to talk about regulation of bone homeostasis, signaling pathways, and novel targets. My disclosures are at the beginning of the uh, syllabus. So uh, many years ago, uh, about 60 years ago in fact, Dr. Alexander Cook, an eminent uh, physician from London, uh, reminded us that the skeleton out of sight and often out of mind is a formidable mass of tissue occupying about 9% of the body by bulk and no less than 17% by weight. The stability and immutability of dry bones and their persistence for centuries and even millions of years after the soft tissues have turned to dust give us a false impression of bone during life. Its fixity after, sharp, after death is in sharp contrast to its ceaseless activity during life. And there was an eloquence in that writing that we unfortunately rarely see in the current uh, medical literature, which is why I continue to show this slide. But uh, what Dr. Cook was reminding us all is that bone is a highly metabolic tissue and that uh, most of that uh, metabolic activity in the adult is directed to this uh, process that we uh, refer to as bone remodeling. So one might ask oneself, what are the functions of bone remodeling, bearing in mind that human beings remodel their skeleton to a greater extent than most uh, other large animals? And in, indeed, contemporary human beings apparently remodel their skeleton uh, to a greater extent than pre-agrarian populations of about uh, 10,000 years ago. So the short-term answer, uh, the one that I tell the medical students every year, is that there are two main functions, calcium homeostasis, particularly long-term calcium homeostasis, and the maintenance of mechanical strength, repair of uh, micro damage. And so if we think of uh, the first one um, and remind ourselves that some 380 million years ago when tiktalic, which uh, is an intermediate between fish and tetrapods, and uh, Neil Shubin, who uh, discovered the fossil, has referred to it as a fishapod, uh, when this creature uh, made its first tentative steps onto dry land, it uh, left behind an environment that was extremely rich in calcium and traded it for one that is, of course, extremely poor. And therefore, the skeleton evolved not only to give this uh, animal, this creature, uh, um, structure, but also as a reservoir for uh, calcium and phosphate. And a nice example of this, um, published a number of years ago now by Dr. Banks, was looking at deer prior to antler formation season, looking at the rib bone, in fact, uh, during antler formation season and then following antler formation season. And what you see is a tremendous removal of calcium from the rib and presumably other uh, bones to supply the antlers, which are rapidly growing and have a tremendous demand for calcium. Now, if this was to remain like this, obviously these, the antlers would have been created at the expense of the skeleton, which would not be good. But because there's a very tight coupling between resorption and formation, which I'll discuss later, uh, once the uh, demand for calcium has subsided, then osteoblasts can go through and repair the damage and the skeleton uh, remains intact. The other function that I mentioned is, wouldn't it be marvelous if our uh, man-made structures could be made of a material such as bone that would uh, not only sense where the damage is, but send in troops, uh, send in workers from the inside uh, to repair that damage without in any way uh, impeding the, the function of the structure. So these are the two sort of obvious ones. I think there, there are many other functions uh, for bone remodeling. Bone is uh, a major source of base uh, in the form of bicarbonate and plays a, a crucial role in acid-base balance. Bone uh, contains growth factors important uh, for bone cell function, but also important for hematopoiesis, for example. No accident that bone marrow and bone are next to each other. 